In our trader rundown today, Dan Deming of KKM Financial is here, and I'm guessing the Fed is in focus for traders. Absolutely. It's going to be uh, all eyes are going to be on the Fed for the Wednesday announcement. The market really came under some uh, volatility last week when we saw the price movement in the markets throughout the week. The market basically had the attention span of a gnat last week when you look at how it was reacting to all the news items. Basically, the news items that came out in the morning kind of dictated the rest of the day as far as the momentum in the markets. Absolutely. So how do you play the market this week? It depends on really what your goals are, but certainly when you look at the market participants down here, the volatility players, you know, they're trying to get a feel for what they feel, you know, for how they feel the market's going to react mm -hmm. post-Fed announcement. Now, we did see a flare-up in volatility. Volatility expectations increased dramatically. We'll have to see if that actually parlays into something post-announcement, if the Fed does surprise or potentially keeps that December uh, drumbeat rolling for the a potential hike there in December, you know, the market's going to have to digest that. And again, last year, if you take a, a cue from last year, the December hike did not go too well in the first couple of months of the 2016. That is very true. A very excellent point there, Dan. So tell me about what traders are thinking as far as this volatility pickup. Is it the Fed or something more? Well, it's, it's the Fed is probably the catalyst and the fact that there's a potential for a shift in the rate environment, even though there's probably not going to be a move on Wednesday, you know, they're going to continue to probably push for a December hike and the market's going to have to contend with that. But I think there's other things as well, Ange. I mean, when you look at some of the technical aspects of the market, the psychology in the market has shifted as such. But technically, we've seen the S&P uh, breakdown now, the SPX or the S&P 500 broke below its 50-day moving average uh, earlier this week and now is significantly below there. I think a break below 2120 on the SPX would signal a potential move lower down to that 200-day moving average, which comes, comes in at 2058. So would you say that there's more of a bearish sentiment in the market right now? I would. I, I would say that it's picked up now that the momentum has shifted towards the downside. Like I said, when you see some of these major averages breaking through their 50-day moving average, so that means the trend has shifted lower. Now you look at the NASDAQ, it's holding above, so that's the one holdout right now, primarily, because, Apple. Of, primarily because of <laughs> Apple. But uh, overall, it does feel like, at least short term here, is the market's going to have to contend with the real realization of higher rates moving forward, and the Fed actually does decide to move in December, which it looks like their all indications are that's their course of action right now, that the market's going to have to digest that. And uh, you know, going on last year, if you have the psychology in the market, market participants are going to be saying, didn't go so well last time, it may not go so well this time. So that's why I think you're seeing this pick up in volatility expectations. Quick question, I know it's not a stock you trade, but Apple, is it going higher? Well, you know, Apple's benefited from a couple of things, and certainly one of them was completely out of the control, and that's the Samsung situation. So that has certainly shifted the winds for Apple in the short term, coupled with the fact of the, the rollout. The timing, I guess, was pretty fortunate for Apple. Uh, you know, I, th I think it's going to be tough for Apple to really gain a tremendous amount of traction from here unless the Samsung hiccup is something that's going to be persistent or perceived as being persistent in other products of theirs moving mm -hmm. forward. So, uh, you know, yeah, for, they could see a little bit more of a boost from here, but you definitely saw a substantial move. And for the size of that stock, you know, for it to maintain that kind of momentum, it'd have to be a huge shift, I think, in actually demand moving forward as well, not just for the iPhone 7 initial rollout, but moving forward, projections moving forward. Very good. Thank you, Dan. All right.